Welcome back to the Digging Deeper podcast brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is not Matt Keith. My name is Ruben Baez. Uh, and I really need to find out a new intro to this because I use Matt's every single time so far. And maybe too. one day we will. Uh, but before I do that, let's go around and see how everyone's doing. Nate, how are you doing? Good job. Good job, Rubes. Well done, Rubes. Uh, I'm doing great, man. I had uh, a week off last week to work around the house and uh, clocked almost, uh, I think it was 120 kilometers running. And Ooh. so just tons of time with the Lord and uh, with my wife and my kids because they're homeschooled. So the whole family's there. And uh, yeah, got lots done. The pool's open. Nice. So haven't been in yet, but pretty soon. Woo-hoo. Pretty nice. soon. Summer's here. Chilly, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, I I'm I'm good. I'm good. the The weather is great, and uh, just really exciting time in a lot of like junior youth and youth. We're coming to like the last month, and and just so encouraged seeing the way our leaders are so dedicated to caring for their kids. Um, and there's a lot of, especially in youth, you just there's so many uh, deep pastoral care needs there's so much that our, our youth are struggling with and i just think man what do kids do without a church what do families do without a church because uh they just really need that community around them and it's just a real privilege to be able to come around kids and families and i'm just really proud of our leaders who are accepting that responsibility and mm. sharing and bearing that burden and their mm-hmm. heart's desire is just like oh help me do this well and represent christ's name well and not take his name in vain so just really proud of them right now mm. yeah mm. Very good. pastor tong who's also sitting on the other side of the room <laughs> <laughs> feels like social no, distancing I can't sit with you people <laughs> i've got the comfortable chair over here <laughs> i'm doing great rooms yeah i'm, I'm fantastic uh Pool's not open. <laughs> Didn't have a week off, um, but uh, no, um, alive, awake, alert, hyperactive, healthy, happy. Oh, uh, celebrating my forty fifth wedding yeah, anniversary oh, yeah. in go. a few weeks, if we make it. <laughs> if there's no death or divorce between now and then, yeah. and so uh, pretty excited about that. How are you doing, Ruben? Yeah, uh, I'm doing very good. This past weekend. I just randomly went to Ottawa with a bunch of young adults and our two of our young adults leaders. And we uh, saw Justin Trudeau and Pierre and they preached a little bit. So that was cool, I guess, until people <laughs> were getting kicked out. So that was a little bit random too. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, I'm doing very good. Um, enjoying this season of busyness and I'm looking forward to summer break, but also just enjoying the season that we're in and like just the ability and the opportunity that God's given me to serve here and to be surrounded by these people. Um, is an opportunity that not everybody gets. So I've been very grateful for that lady. Yeah. We love having you here. Yes, we, we like do. being surrounded Thanks, by you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, BT. Everywhere you go, he's there. <laughs> many talents. Yeah, many talents. He's got many talents. <laughs> he's got many talents. Working hard. Thanks, guys. And thank you, PT, for your sermon this weekend. Um, I was in Life Group last night at Senior Youth. And a couple of the kids started using language that you spoke about cool. from your sermon. So I was like, okay, so that's cool. They're it's, listening. It's, it's hitting and it's right. <laughs> um, And I really appreciated the clarity you taught on what it actually means to take someone's name and what it means to take the Lord's name in vain. Because for many years, I had a wrong conception of that. And I was wondering if you could continue to speak into what it means to actually take someone's name and to take the Lord's name. And what are some examples of that? And also, what are some examples of what that's not like? So, Pastor Tom, if you want to share on that, I'm. I wonder if you got, if you thought it was clear because you had to hear it four times and prepare for yeah. this podcast. <laughs> yeah, that, that might have been part of it. Because yeah. the first, the first time I preached it, someone said to me, "I was waiting for you to get to the part about taking God's name in vain," and I went, "Okay, well, that was my whole thirty, and I think I went thirty-five minutes." Yeah, was well, that yeah. Well, the eight o'clock got the extended cut. That, it wasn't quite that clear. So I tried to clear it up. If you came to the other two services or other three services or however many, um, <laughs> you know, just that traditionally the understanding of that commandment is not to say, oh, my God, or use Jesus Christ's name in vain and as a swear word when you hit your thumb with a hammer. And that's the one thing. Like, don't misuse God's name. Don't mm. speak it inappropriately. Mm. And then the second understanding of it, and this one you can support with other scriptures, hmm. but the second one is about taking oaths. So like going to court, putting your hand on the Bible and swear it, you're going to tell yeah. the truth. And you're not supposed to take an oath in God's name. Hmm. And 
but the actual word nasa does not mean speaking. There's no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no hint of talking. It's about yeah. taking or lifting up mm -hmm. or, or taking mm -hmm. possession or ownership. Mm -hmm. So I think while those are all great and we can fully support those first two with a lot of scripture, yeah. both Old and New Testament. So one. don't hear me say you can now around using God <laughs> right. or Jesus Christ's name in vain. We're not, you know, is this curse word. And, and don't go take oaths with secret societies mm -hmm. where people of the light. Mm -hmm. But it, the I think the heart of it, given the whole context with what's happening with the people of Israel becoming God's people mm -hmm. is much more the marriage metaphor, the marriage mm -hmm. illustration of a wife taking her husband's name. Mm -hmm. yeah. The people of God taking the name of Yahweh for us as Christians is calling ourselves Christians. Mm. Right. Yeah. So the uproar at the at the national prayer breakfast mm. was to have a, a political leader or a prime minister, for example, say I'm a Christian, and we go and and and, and you know in, in the United States, you know Joe Biden said I'm a, I'm a Catholic and go, mm. but Catholics don't believe in abortion. Yeah. You know these are not the things that. Catholics do. In our case, the scriptures are pretty clear on what it means to be a Christian. So if not, it's not that you must live your life perfectly, but if you're not going to live your life as a Christ follower, don't take up the name mm -hmm. of Christ. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, that's really so good. So I hope I made it clear in the yes. second and third and fourth <laughs> service. And if not, maybe the podcast will help. Yes, I, <laughs> I hope so as well. That, that clears things up. It does for me. But once again, I listened to it six times. So <laughs> you also later on in that sermon, you walk through what it means to be created in the image of God and how we can actually tarnish his image uh, when we choose to not follow the way that he intends us to live. And I wanted to, I've been wrestling with what's the difference between um, being created in his image and bearing his image, but also representing his name. And what's the difference between being created in the image of God, mm -hmm. but also representing his name and, and where does that line? And yeah, if you guys could just speak into that at all. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, when I think about the image of God, there's kind of these two pieces of it. There's something that speaks to our ontological nature and then our operational nature. So like, who are we at our essence? And we are made in the image of God, no matter what happens to us, no matter what we do mm. from conception to natural death we are made in the image of god uh even if we're brain dead because we are more than just uh, a mind even if our someone's quadriplegic and their body doesn't work because we're mm -hmm. more than just a body we're one whole nefesh one whole living being created in the image of god and then there is the the purpose that we read in do we can read in genesis 1 and 2 in the creation story that as image bearers we're called to rule and reign with with God, with Christ, co heirs with Christ when you bring in the New Testament piece, um, as as image bearers to rule the world on his behalf and, and transform this world, bring the garden out to everywhere, the garden of Eden ethic everywhere, and to continue to create along with him. So so there's like the image of God piece that's core to who we are as humans that no matter what we do, it, it never goes away. Every human bears the image of God. Mm -hmm. And then we can live into that and the purpose he's called us to or not. Mm. Um, and, and I think when we look at Exodus 19, the Exodus 19, four to six call that the Lord says, see, I, I, like I brought you out of Egypt on wings, like Eagles to myself. And I've, then he calls them to be, it, he says, if you obey my commands, then you will be a, a Royal priesthood, a holy nation. And it's not because then they'll earn their status mm -hmm. as a Royal priesthood and a holy nation. But he's saying like, if you will obey me by obeying me, that is how you will be a holy nation, a holy nation and a royal priesthood. So as we obey, then we represent him to the world and mm -hmm. and uh, can transform the world. Mm -hmm. So because a holy nation are, are people yeah. who don't steal other people's wives. <laughs> yes. Don't steal other people's cars. Yes. Don't lie and get other people thrown in jail. Yep. 
Don't steal people and make them slaves. Don't covet other Don't people's covet, stuff. Right. Mm. That's the holy nation. It's Who not, take rest? It's not you earn it or you got check marks to your brain. Yes. It's the character of the people yes. you are. You become it that's, by obeying. Mm. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And it's always been God's desire for his people is to be a nation set apart, right? Yeah. And so mm. when we uh, when we l- actually receive and understand whose image we're created in, which is the image of God, and then uh, receive that call, you know, to be his disciples, we're immediately launched into obedience. Mm. Otherwise, you can't really receive the call and not obey. Like It kind of goes both ways. Yeah. So once we receive the call, we're launched into obedience. And out of that obedience is the language in James that, you know, we have faith, therefore, knowing Jesus, faith in him, surrender to him, ob- obeying the call means good deeds. And mm-hmm. so this is, sometimes we look at the Ten Commandments, I think we've said it a couple of times, I know you said it this this week, PT, but like, People go like, oh, the Ten Commandments, that's nice. That's good. I can agree with that. Mm. They agree with it because they think it's nice and good. And mm. they probably think that because they have grown up in a Judeo-Christian, mm-hmm. post-Judeo-Christian yeah. world. Right? Yeah, that's right. So they, that's why they agree with those values. And yet, you know, to agree with them without a full surrender to God is is, is impossible and, and won't result in the fruit, the, uh, the good deeds that should and ought to come from o- obedience to the call. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, PT said in breakfast meeting this morning, that we should be like our community of New Hope Church, as a as a royal priesthood, as a as a community set apart for God. Like that, we should be as different and as weird <laughs> to culture as you know the old order Mennonites look when they dress. But that's how we should be because we're so set apart and it's so different. And how are how is it like this? Why, why is your why are you so friendly? Why are you so like this is weird? Um, why do you give money to the, so much why do you, money? Why do you, why do you, why do you, so why do you go to church every Sunday? Yeah. Why do you do all these things? Why are you getting married good when you're question. 21 years old? Was, that's right. You know, questions you get. Why is it like this? Or <laughs> not, a good friend of mine come here and say, this is the first place I've ever been where I haven't felt like race was an issue. Like mm-hmm. that I didn't feel racism, that I was accepted. Mm. I'm like, oh, praise God. That, that's exactly the kind of community we want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks guys for get, sharing on that and uh, speaking some clarity into that difference. Um, I also wanted to dive into what it looks like to actually represent his name. So if we're going to choose to be a holy nation and uh, obey, what does that look like to do it well? Um, and you guys spoke into a little bit. And could you share personally, how have you represented his name well? And how what have been struggles in your life that you face where you've struggled to actually represent him well? Um yeah, I don't know, PT, if you want to start on that. Well, I don't have any struggles. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, then I'll go. I got lots. No, you can share my struggles. <laughs> I'll share yeah, there's nothing like having children share the parents' struggle. <laughs> just remember, the next commandment that coming up is on your <laughs> I'm just, not going to be on that podcast. Just, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'll give you the most recent one is, is uh, you know, we did our deck and, and my staff, God bless them, for my birthday, for my 65th birthday, bought me this nice TV for out of my deck, right? So I've got it out there, and now it's busticated. And <laughs> I have a lot of TVs. I don't need that TV to work. Hmm. And they're sending someone over from China to fix it tomorrow. Hmm. And I'm excited about that. But all of a sudden, there's this got to get it impatience growing in me you know and i mean i've been working on the deck for a while so i would like to finish it but i'm i'm ashamed of the or i'm embarrassed of this impatience that brews up mm-hmm. inside of me that's just one small thing of how you know the fruit of the spirit you know isn't fully developed in me yeah you know love joy yeah. peace patience kindness gentleness meekness self control yeah. i think i have more than i did 5 years ago but i hope i don't have as much as i will 5 years from now mm-hmm. And so when that, those non-fruits of the spirit, like impatience wells up, I mean, it's an ugly thing Mm -hmm. and it doesn't reflect the name of Yahweh and it doesn't reflect the Jesus, the the God who is slow to anger and and merciful beyond imagination, right? And so, yeah, it shows up in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll leave it at that and let Nathan get into some more gory ones. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, I was going to say the, the fruit of the spirit is an easy litmus test for sure. Right? Yeah. I think that's, you know, if we assume that, that we had his spirit in us, then those are the fruit that we should be seeing. So that's a, the answer to the first part of your question. What does it look like to represent his name? And, and we see that played out in, in that example for sure. I think one of the other 
areas I think Christians who call themselves Christ followers often stand out in the workplace mm. um, because they're honest and they're hardworking, they're trustworthy. Um, you know, I, I was talking to um, Emily before she started working here. She goes, I just kept getting promoted, but like I was just <laughs> sober like for only a few years. And like, why are they giving me keys to the vault? I go like, Christians will always get promoted. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because Christians are honest. They show yeah. up early. Yeah. They stay late. They work yes. hard. They're respectful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, 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 you know, their yes is their yes, their no is their no. They, yeah. they live by a different set of values. And it's, it's unfortunately so stark and different in our mm-hmm. world that it does represent him well. And it's actually not all that hard. So I know PT said, you know, uh, use words. Don't, you know, charade, <laughs> don't charade the gospel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, your actions, your words of respect are also gospel telling words of people going, that's something different. You're representing someone different than mm-hmm. I'm, than I've met before. And that's why people will say when they walk in new hope church, they're, they're immediately hit with this wall of joy mm-hmm. and well, welcome. That's odd. They don't get it. And I go like, that's because we're representing Christ to you. Mm-hmm. We're, we're joyful. We're saved by Christ and he loves you deeply. And so do we. And, uh, and so that's, um, I, I misrepresent Christ in many ways. I was going to say patience as well, but I'll go, um, I struggle with, uh, bitterness to certain people who've yelled at my children. <laughs> I don't know if he'll ever listen to this podcast, but I pray that one day he does. He's my fave five. And I just, oh, like, yes. there's, there's moments where, you know, weird Papa Bear Nathan gets like like anger angry and it comes from this is root of bitterness and unforgiveness that I still struggle and, and that's not who I want to be you know mm. uh, I want to be overflowing with you know forgiveness and grace mm. like I've been forgiven so much I I can't forgive like so I, yeah. I recognize that in myself um, this need for yeah, a time of prayer and forgiveness for for a lot of things and I think that, that comes out both to my kids they see it and to others. So, mm-hmm. yes, I will. That was <laughs> the kids is my first example of who I misrepresent Christ to. Like <laughs> I know uh, Dave and I are very intentional with trying to lead them to Jesus. Um, but like, I don't know, whatever it was this weekend or it must've been Saturday or something. I'm like doing yard work. And so I'm marathoning this great Bible project series on the Sermon on the Mount, which is so many 10 commandment things uh, <laughs> connected to it. Yeah. And then Cal does something. He's trying to do something helpful. He's trying to fix this cupboard. And I freak out at him because I'm like, you're going to scratch it. You're going to break it. It's going to be bad. And I like just like the exact, like so quick to anger. So quick to anger. Mm. And I've got the gospel being preached in my ear. And I'm like, you freaking hypocrite. Like, anyway, I was just, and that's like one of 1 billion times I can just think of how uh, the people I mistreat the most and misrepresent Jesus to are my kids who are supposed to care about the most. Um, so I guess that's that's one example. And then maybe some ways I felt like maybe I have represented Christ well that then, of course, go off the rails uh, are like things like, like Nate, like you shared about at work. I remember I served at a restaurant for a long time. And, uh, usually if anyone's ever served before you like exchange the credit tips for cash and people want the cash cause then you don't claim it. But I always be like, Oh, take all my cash. I don't care. I claim all my tips anyway. And they'd be like, you what? Mm. And, um, so, so just explaining why I would be honest with my money and I trust God with my money and I'm not going to do anything. Uh, that's not above board. Um, I remember being really young, being engaged when I was 19 or 20 and people being like, you're getting married. And I'm like, well, we love each other. We've been together for three years and we're not going to sleep together or live together until we're married. So yep. Getting married young. <laughs> and that uh, about says it. I, if you didn't catch that, rewind it and play it back slowly. Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> when you love each other, you've been together for a long time and you will not live together or sleep together until you're married that happens more quickly. Mm, amen. And uh, yeah, just having opportunities uh, to share the gospel of that. And then also so many missed opportunities where I talked around it about myself or choices I've made or, and didn't, and missed the opportunity to get to the heart of the gospel mm. and share um, who Jesus was through that. Or even, and I've shared before on the podcast, me quitting my job at Ridley and times where I had that opportunity to share like the gospel through that and times where I just kind of talked about myself. Mm. And, and, and missed that, that opportunity. And I I think one of the, when I think back to like in individual conversations, when have I best shared the gospel? I, there was a, a time in our Bible study at Ridley and it was only four girls and they were all from China. And uh, the one girl's English was so weak. 
and we were just trying to explain the gospel. And uh, I just remember looking her in the eyes and saying, I love Jesus. <laughs> and you could, you could see that, like the Holy Spirit, like translated that. There you go. And it wasn't all the words and it wasn't everything, but it was like, well, that's the heart of because of what he did for me. And yeah, so I think I'm like, that's kind of burned in my memory. I don't remember everything around it, but I'm like in all these other interactions, how am I getting to that, the heart of who God mm -hmm. is and not talking about myself and mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. 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 I think I'm guilty of that as well with the sharing the gospel piece, mm -hmm. um, especially because so many of my friends, like going to a Christian school my whole life, they know of Jesus and they know who Jesus is yeah. and they know the gospel. But I still think that there's an aspect of them needing to hear it time and time again until they're finally going to understand it <laughs> and accept that yeah. grace that he has for us. And so many times, like, it's a perfect opportunity. One-on-one, -on -one, we've been talking about stuff and I, I have the opportunity to share and I choose to avoid it mm. out of either fear of them, like, going out of the conversation or not wanting to talk about it or whatever. Um, and... I recently came across the verse of read it a couple of times, but in Luke 10, Jesus tells us about how the harvest is plentiful mm -hmm. and how like, like the, it's ripe. Like people are ready. People are ready to come to Christ today. And yet so many times throughout my day with so many different people, I choose to, um, yeah, I try and be a nice person and act nice and show yeah. them who Jesus is, but yeah. I don't intentionally share the gospel with them. Yeah. And that's been something I've been trying to work on more is like where are opportunities that I can just sh share the gospel, mm -hmm. like just show them who Jesus is and tell them about what he's done in my life mm -hmm. and ask them if they too want to accept him into their lives. Yeah. Um, so that's been for sure something that's, I've that's been good. wrestling with. More awesome. than with just charades, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not only charades. I really liked your charades of the gospel. Uh, yes. PT. That was very good. If you missed out on Sunday, check it out on video. It was yeah. very good. <laughs> yeah. I do it now, but. <laughs> yeah. You know, it doesn't well, work on the effective. podcast. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. hard on radio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And one more thing you shared PT about a uh, story of new hope and how through COVID you had to wrestle with, what it looks like to represent God and um, what it looks like, w the different choices we had to make in order to do what was best to represent Christ to the community we're in. Um, and I wanted to ask, what are some examples of some struggles we have today as a church um, where we're wrestling with, how are we going to represent God in this? What are the ways we're going to do that? What are the choices we have? Um, if there's any specific examples you could share into New Hope today. Well, we're currently in a, a struggle with trying to build on our property and um, and we have opposition mm. from uh, city officials and uh, from uh, different groups in uh, the uh, peninsula um, and you know preservation of agricultural land which is a good thing we technically are agricultural but nothing's been ever grown here for over a hundred years mm -hmm. and so I, I we're going to court we have lawyers many <laughs> we have a a conflict um we've been invited to go to mediation and we are and we're going actually this 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 friday so if you hear this beforehand pray for us um but um next friday thank you no problem um, so how do we conduct ourselves hmm. yeah. when we went to the, the city and the whole church came hmm. Hmm. and how did we conduct ourselves? Mm -hmm. Uh, we went to the region and a lot of people came. How do we conduct ourselves in that environment? Um, there were signs, but we didn't bring any, there were, um, comments made. What ended up happening was uh, the the security guard at the region who was making sure we behaved ourselves yeah. uh, came back to the church that night and oh. started coming to our church on a regular basis. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to conduct ourselves with kindness and love mm -hmm. and sp just speaking the truth speak and, and, and requesting what we were requesting. We were mm -hmm. requesting some variances and certain allowances that all citizens are allowed to request politely and respectfully and... Well, there was some abuse, I would say, particularly, you know, calling me out on some things that was inappropriate. Mm. You know, how did we conduct ourselves? We conducted ourselves the best we could with kindness and love. And so mm. we're in that situation now and trying to bear the name of Jesus well. We were talking earlier about some of our failures in 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 bearing the name of Christ. Hmm. 
And while we can't bear the name of Christ perfectly, we can bear the gospel. Mm. Mm. And by that, I mean, when we mess up, which we yeah, will. That's right. Because the gospel isn't about living perfectly and keeping right. the Ten Commandments perfectly. That's right. The, the gospel is about following Christ. So and when we yeah. Fall, yeah. fall, we quickly repent, yeah. confess it, mm. own it, you know, make right what we can make right with yeah. others and get back on following Jesus. Yeah. So we can't witness to the character of God perfectly, but we can witness to the gospel. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Because the gospel is about mercy and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And and that gives hope to people because if we could pretend that we were perfect, other people would just throw their hands up and say, forget it. Yeah. But when we let people know, hey, we mess up too, we have a gospel big enough, mm. they can join us in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they can join us and you can join us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciated the other day in staff meeting PT, you said you called yourself a rascal. <laughs> you said we're all rascals and that's yeah. why we need Jesus and that's why we have his grace. Um, so just connecting to that, that like, we're not perfect and we never will be. It's it's impossible for us. We're born into a sinful mm-hmm. world and we are a sinful people, but that is exactly the gospel is to mm-hmm. recognize the grace that he has for us time and time again. So, yeah. I, I think uh, for, uh, for me personally, there was multiple times. One would be definitely during, uh, during COVID. I know PT referenced that, but um, trying to understand who am I ultimately reporting to because I would call public health um, I would be the person to deal with all, all the people coming in, uh, you know, whatever, uh, threatening to fine us for having people or they asking to count how many people or pushing past, you know, Matt at the door to get in and then dealing with them and lawyers on day. And so it was a, it was a hard season for me to try to figure out what is, you know, Christ like leadership require in this season. And then our own denomination at the time told us to close said that we would be a you know everyone closed we didn't have to they just said we should all just close right away because that's a better witness yeah, to be clear this is when the government said we were allowed yeah, we were open. allowed to be open yes. and they said we should all close would be we were being a bad witness so like wow what what a time to <laughs> be a leader yeah and um i was reminded of the the times when they said go kill all the, the babies and mm. they said, sorry, we, we, we've we tried. The midwives said this. Sorry, we've tried, but the, these Hebrew women, they're so good. They just keep pushing these babies up. They, uh, we didn't even know about it. We didn't even know about it. And it's a full-on lie to yeah. a, a government like, asking them to do something absolutely horrific. Yeah, And uh, we didn't lie, um, but we didn't re- turn people away. Hmm. So when we were allowed 35%, um, we would set up 35% of the chairs. And if extra people came in, then we would set up chairs in the lobby and open the garage doors. And... Uh, yeah. You know, it, that was a hard decision. Mm. That was a yeah. really hard decision because you're going like, well, we want to we want to follow the rules and we don't like want to kill people. I love how you said that. I really don't want to kill people. <laughs> I didn't want to kill and yet, anyone. And yet, would, would yeah. me telling people you're not welcome in the house of the Lord, w- would I go to bed that night and go, God's proud of me. Mm. I did a good job leading. Uh, or how how do I answer to that? And that's that, that was a difficult one for me. Uh, and I think the, the biggest other one is, is doctrine these days. The, yeah. Being a good witness means watering down the gospel, mm-hmm. making it more palpable, not offending. And uh, man, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be at that church that I don't get. Nathan Braun doesn't get offended at because mm-hmm. my sin's pretty disgusting. Not yeah. ju- not to you, even, although it is gross to you guys. It's really disgusting because it put Christ on the cross. And if that gospel message isn't abundantly clear, mm-hmm. then I don't think we're doing a, a good job. So um, mm-hmm. those would be a couple areas I yeah. think as a leader in these last years has been. Um, hard to navigate because the pressure to bend mm. is heavy. Yeah, I think that last one is the one that's the most consistent for me, especially in junior youth and senior youth where those life groups are a bit unique. Like unlike our adult life groups, it's like at any, any week, you're going to get a new kid in your life group that you don't know. And they're just going to show up and we have to be ready to have room for new kids to come uh, throughout. And so there's this, there's this tension of like, being this place uh, that's that's open, but also helping other kids move forward in their discipleship. The beautiful thing about the gospel is you grow and you are discipled while you're on missions. Mm. So calling those kids in that life group, and yeah. we had man like a like a master's class level example <laughs> of that last <laughs> night with uh, some of the young women that uh, I debriefed their life group, some of our youth core kids after uh, one of the new people that came to their group that shared some stuff that was hard for them to like, how do I reconcile this? How do I deal with this? 
Um, and you know, we're in a series right now in engaging culture. And this Tuesday, speaking of things you can pray for, you know, we're going to talk as we do every year. We're going to help try to help kids wrestle through issues of gender and sexuality. And how do they, how do they represent Christ well to speak about that? How do they, how do they give that clearer, better vision? Uh, but how do they do that with gentleness and respect and reflecting the character of God? And as you're calling the kids who have already given them their lives to Christ in there, you've got 50, you've got 75 kids who aren't who aren't Christians and are wrestling with their own sexuality who have, uh, you know, parents who are from all different kinds of places. And just, it's like, how do you let them know relationally that there's grace that you're welcome here. You don't have to believe what we believe Mm -hmm. to be part of here and clearly present the truth. Mm -hmm. And, and that's just, uh, that's not a problem to be solved. That's just like a tension we have to manage of how can we be radically relationally gracious Mm -hmm. and super clear on the truth. And what, what is so great is when you're super clear on the truth, it gives you the freedom to be radically relationally gracious because mm-hmm. you've been clear about what the Bible says. And then we say, and you're welcome here and you don't have to believe it. Yeah. And you can be, you can belong here. So yeah. yeah, pray for our youth leaders and all our life group leaders yeah. as they try to navigate all those tensions and challenges. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. And thank you for speaking into some of those and how we can continue to wrestle with that. Um, thank you for listening today. If this is your first time. You can, Check us out online and fill out a connect card. Uh, Join us on a Sunday, continuing through the Ten Commandments, and we will see you next time.